Floods are continuing to blanket street stop signs, even front doors here in Taney County. Lake Taney Como's levels remain steady, but at record levels. KSPR's Jonah Kaplan has been the only one able to get access to an evacuated neighborhood in Hollister. He joins us now with this exclusive look. Another day, another boat. This is Foggy River Road. Look at some of these homes. This is as close as anyone can get to the place that they live. The current is a little calmer, but the depth is still like, well, a lake. Even if that street sign says Sycamore Hill. This home belongs to the Bangma family, but this week they're living at the Branson Windmill Inn. It gets cramped and they're going stir crazy. But yes, it's tight for a family of five, including Daga Bangma's three daughters. Here's their kitchen and their bathroom and their yard. Mostly you're scared that you're going to lose all your things, your home. You don't know if you have a home to go back to. You don't know if you're going to be able to fix it. If, if you do fix it, is it safe for three kids to live in that area that's a flood zone now? Bangma's girls are out of school today and obviously out of their comfort zone. Mom says they have nightmares about rushing waters, and the oldest daughter, Justice, sets an example for her sisters. But even she has her emotional moments. Is it going to get to the second story? Is it going to, oh, my stuff's going to go somewhere in the lake? Like stuff people have given me. My uh, stuff I've had since I was a baby, like maybe like a stuffed animal or something. It could be several more days before the Bangmas go home, but they're relieved to be staying together. A home, Mom says, doesn't have to be more than where you eat and sleep. We tell them it's going to be okay. We tell them that the house is going to be okay, that the water is going to go down, that, that at least we're safe, and um, it's just things. Things are just things, and we can replace them. It hasn't rained maybe for more than a day, but the Table Rock Dam gates are still open and flowing at unprecedented rates. And every day that happens, the levels of Lake Taney Como remain just as high, which means all those homes on Foggy River Road remain underwater and off limits to the families that live there. In Hollister, Jonah Kaplan, KSBR News. Thanks, Jenna. Six other displaced families from Foggy River Road are living at the Branson Windmill Inn. You might recognize the top of this home here on Foggy River Road. Of course, last week when we came through here by motorboat, this was all underwater. Well, this week families are returning for the first time, but they can't move in just yet. And some families aren't even sure if they're going to be allowed to. Our footage from the 2011 floods still looks unreal. Today, though, you could walk down the street. And Larry Hooper is able to walk through his home or at least tread through it. After 08, they talked to us. They said that, uh, no, you know, this is your 100-year flood and everything. All the ceilings are down. Everything's down. All the wood is warped. It's just destroyed. I think we'll probably move away. Uh, once, you can deal with. Twice, no. No, I, I'm done with it. Hooper showed us how these unprecedented rushing waters drenched his den, his bedrooms, and his kitchen. The destruction. Totally amazing. Across the street, Hooper's neighbors were asking similar questions. Should we stay or go? This was Dave and Dega Bangma's house last week. Today, they took their daughter to see the damage. There's a possibility all the houses across the street are going to be condemned. You know, what's going to happen there? We're going to be living in a ghost town, you know, a former area. Dino Kartsanakis even showed us his now ruined grand pianos. We really don't want to get out of here, but we have no choice. I think we're going to have to. Moving trucks line the street like a real estate grand opening, except for all the mud. Larry Hooper built this home for his retirement. Now he's going to build somewhere else. Devastating. Uh, it's like you walk in and you know there's going to be a lot of destruction, but you just can't even imagine until you see it up, up close. It's, it's unreal. In 2008, FEMA came through here, and after those floods, they rezoned this area as a floodway instead of a flood plain, meaning no more homes can be built waterfront here along Lake Taney Como. So what does this mean for remodeling after the 2011 floods? Well, it means that nothing can happen without FEMA's permission, and those agents won't arrive for another two weeks. Before they can rebuild the homes here on Foggy River Road, they have to gut the homes on Foggy River Road. This is all the debris and drywalling that was taken out of these homes that had so much flooding just a little while ago. Problem is, though, even while they're gutting, homeowners are still asking the question, what do we do now? It's nerve-wracking, very nerve-wracking. Since we met Larry Hooper last month, We've seen his house go from underwater to damage from water to, well, there's barely anything left here anymore. 
What are you going to do? You can't just leave it sit here and rot. First shock, you think no. But, you know, bottom line, it's your home and you'd like to be in your home. Like Hooper, many Foggy River residents want to rebuild their homes, but they're not sure they're allowed to yet. FEMA agents assessed individual homes today, but the next step is finding out by U.S. mail whether or not they're eligible for a grant or a loan. Taney County has the final say, but it too hasn't come up with a conclusion. Talked to the uh, county commissioner, called him a few times, he hasn't called me back, uh, and we've talked to FEMA, and they just don't know yet. That's what they tell us. Down the road, Dino and Cheryl Kartsanakis has thrown out everything but the piano. They too are just gutting and waiting. Oh, you can't get a building permit, so hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to you know, understand more about all this really quickly. We were able to reach the Taney County Commission, and it's true that they haven't reached a conclusion. But that's because they fear the flooding isn't done. We're fragile right now. I mean, the rainy season is still going on. Let's do the demo, but then hold off on the rebuilding until we know that the, we've averted any more flooding. For Larry Hooper, he's strong in his resolve. Water won't keep him away for long. You take away a lot of the debris and everything and you start cleaning it up, it makes you feel a little better. It makes you feel more like, okay, we're getting closer to being home again. Taney County officials are confirming two bits of information. One is that they have requested from FEMA to set up two disaster recovery centers, one in Hollister and one in Branson. The other is that next week they will be holding a town hall meeting to go over these same questions that all the residents are asking. One thing is definitely certain though, there's still a lot more work to be done. It's not exactly a hopscotch, but when Lake Taney Como becomes a yard, a driveway and a neighborhood, well, there's just not much else to do. We're just two feet away from being in the hotel again. For the second time in three weeks, Dave Bangma and family are living on the waterfront, except that their home on Foggy River Road is actually two blocks from the original waterfront. I can try to deal with it, but trying to explain to the kids we got to move again, the house is flooded again, uh, we can't really go anywhere else, we're not going to be able to sell the house, I can't just pick up and move. And, Leave my, leave my mortgage and try to start over at this point. Bangma's neighborhood first flooded at the end of April. The waters receded two weeks ago, making way for FEMA, SEMA, and cleaning crews to literally flood the streets with their equipment. Larry Hooper spent tens of thousands of dollars drying out his house after Table Rock Dam shut its gates the first time. How many times can they destroy our house over here? This is absolutely ridiculous. There's many homes here that are destroyed for the second time in three weeks. And uh, who, who's responsible for that? This is not a uh, natural thing. This is man-made flood. Bangma's house isn't submerged like Hooper's, but it's still isolating his family. This isn't the safe family neighborhood he had in mind for his three daughters. It's no longer a 100-year flood. It's a every-year flood, and it's a every two, three times maybe a year flood. We're stuck here now, unless somebody wants to come down here and by us out. FEMA and SEMA can maybe answer the question about if these families and victims can rebuild again, but now the neighbors are taking their struggle into their own hands. They need money to live outside their home. They need money to survive outside their home. Coming up tonight at 6, we'll tell you about that special benefit. And oh, by the way, the Bangmas just got this from the Taney County Assessor's Office. The property taxes are going up next year. Maybe all of the families living on Foggy River Road will invest in boats instead of cars. After all, this is now the second time in three weeks that the neighborhood is completely flooded and off limits. Well, now the neighbors are coming together to ask for help in a single voice. Joplin, Kansas City, and Alabama, and Louisiana, and so on. Branson, Missouri, the Hollister area has a, just a need right now, immediate need. There are people that are devastated here in this town. <laughs> Branson performer Dino Kartsanakis is used to the stage, but tonight he's shedding light on a different scene, record level flooding in his neighborhood of Foggy River Road. Tonight, he'll join some of Branson's finest to raise awareness and charity. They gotta live somewhere. Some have gotten these hotel rooms, and hotels around here in Branson have lowered their rates tremendously, but they still have to charge, you know. I know some hotels only charge $25, but $25, you, add, you know, in a week, they got it with this money, plus they got to buy food. Plus, you know, they've got mortgages to pay. 
You can't just walk away from your mortgage payment. The truth is, Kartsanakis and his neighbors can't even walk to their homes. The waters first receded two weeks ago, enabling FEMA, SEMA, and cleaning crews to literally flood the streets with equipment. Larry Hooper spent thousands of dollars drying his home last week, only to find his house underwater again today. I realize there's a lot of devastation everywhere. Uh, down in Joplin and everything else, but uh, gosh, we have a lot of families here that need a lot of help too. And uh, we really appreciate him doing some stuff for us. Tonight's event will feature guest performances and a silent auction, and Kartsanakis insists he's taking no money. His shows entertain, but tonight, his efforts could help some 200 families. I'm a victim, but you know what? But I'm also a victor, you know, I'm gonna write about it. And we're gonna win and we're going to replenish everything that's been taken. Will the Branson flood benefits stop the bleeding? Maybe. But will it stop the flooding? Probably not. Table Rock Dam's gates still open, and the Army Corps of Engineers is warning that Table Rock Lake may not return to its normal functioning levels until at least August. New this morning, Taney County Commissioners could decide today if and how to buy out flood-ravaged properties. But even if they approve the buyouts, there will still be a burden on flood victims. KSPR's Jonah Kaplan has been following this story the last couple of months. He's live in our studio this morning with the latest details. Jonah? Hey, Kyle, there were 38 Taney County properties, and these are places outside of Branson and Hollister city limits that sustained extensive damage from the floods. Now, the federal government says it will pitch in, but that might not be enough. This was the scene, of course, in April on Foggy River Road. That's when Lake Taney's Como's levels rose to unprecedented levels as a result of Table Rock Dam's gates opening. When it all dried out, FEMA surveyed the damage and ruled that many of these homes were more than 50% damaged. The federal government is offering a plan to buy these properties from owners and pay 75% of the value if the county can raise the other 25% from non-federal sources. The residents we spoke to absolutely want to be bought out, and they're losing patience, but Taney County Commissioners are hesitant to pay their cut. Now, they don't even want to come up with the 25% to even buy them back, when they should have never allowed them to be built to start with. Uh, FEMA told me that in 08 that these houses should have never been allowed to be built here. We don't have the wherewithal to do it. We just don't. Uh, but there's grants out there. I mean, there's there's also grants that we can apply for that 25 percent. Right. But we got to apply for it. We got to do the overall application, and the county can't be can't be on the hook for that 25 percent. It's just not responsible to, to do that. Now, the FEMA buyout program is voluntary. The owners have the choice to rebuild, but that also comes with new burdens because the floods damaged more than half of some of those homes. Those would have to be rebuilt to be flood safe, elevated some 10 to 20 feet, a huge expense for that as well. The commission's decision, of course, will only apply to those properties out of city limits. Branson and Hollister will have to make their own decisions on buyouts. Jim Lawson with the city of Branson said that decision will not come before July 7th, and Hollister has not yet set a date. This week marks six months since record rainfall doused Taney County and literally submerged some neighborhoods like that of Foggy River Road. KSBR's Jonah Kaplan has been the only reporter covering the area since the first house went underwater. He joins us now with more, and Jonah, what does the area look like now? It's very vacant and there's a lot of wood, a lot of branches still on the ground in the water and most homes still vacant, if not just reduced to their frames. Families we spoke to have not moved back. Now one of those homes that was flooded belonged to Dino and Cheryl Kartsanakis. We met them back in May, here you see them now, when Lake Taney Como nearly reached the top of their garage. Now when the waters receded, we got a first look inside, the furniture was destroyed, mold everywhere and Dino lost his favorite pianos. Now it's a shell of their home of 14 years. At first they started to rebuild, but stopped at the floors. Six months later, they're unsure of their next move, but the floods did not wash away their optimism. No, you come back and, and you can see tragedy or you can choose to see the joy that we've had in this home mm -hmm. and how much uh, we've enjoyed our grandchildren here, our children. In this very room, and yeah. Played and, and yeah. had wonderful Christmases and Easters yes. and, and vacation times. We're going to miss that this year. We will, but, yeah. but you know, we'll make it happen somewhere else. Yeah, we will, we will. Many of Cartsonox's neighbors have made their decisions. Some Owners have decided to rebuild their homes, so we've put them up for sale. One lot we saw was reduced just to that, a lot. They knocked down their home. Others, though, still awaiting word from FEMA before taking any action, hoping that their property will be 
bought out. Incredible pictures there, Jonah, from just a, a couple of months ago. It hasn't been that long I, ago. I at took all. two boats. Uh -huh. I the first day I went on a canoe, the next day on a motorboat. And just to go back there, it's really amazing to see and uh, still vacant. I mean, who would go back there? Right. And it, we're still waiting word on FEMA is exactly how they're going to be. Held right. Well, a couple up. of the homes that were damaged more than 50% are eligible for a buyout, but it's been a very busy year for FEMA. Besides the flooding here, you had the tornadoes in Joplin and Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And of course, you had Hurricane Irene up in New York and Vermont. On. So county officials tell me that females, you know, you're going to have to be patient for their buyout process it may take up to a year. Yeah, we may have to wait a little bit longer. Thank you, Jonah.